Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 film Spiral, and it's a Shutter original, and since it's a Shutter original, and when I'm putting this out, it hasn't even hit Shutter yet, uh, this will be a no-spoiler review, so you can carry on without fear of spoilers happening. Now, uh, maybe a little bit thematically and subtext-wise, but that doesn't ruin anything about the actual film. Now, this film is supposed to hit Shutter on Thursday, the 17th of September, so just know that. Now, this is directed by Curtis David Harder, who did films Cody Fitz and In Control. Have not seen them. Uh, written by Colin Minahan, who you may recognize some of his resume. Grave Encounters, Grave Encounters 2, Extraterrestrial, It Stains the Sands Red, Stillborn, and Z. Now, I've only, I saw the first Grave Encounters, and I thought it was a solid film. I know people who love it. I thought it was okay. Uh, I haven't seen the second one. I haven't seen any of his other stuff except Z. And Z, I think, was the last film that he had done, and I did not like Z at all. So when I saw that on there, I was a little bit worried. That said, this film was... I'm kind of in the middle on this film, to be honest. And and there's good, there's good I see in it, and there's not so good I see in it. And I'll talk about that. But also uh, having written this is John... Poliquin, who also wrote Chilling Visions 5, uh, Chilling Visions, Five States of Fear, sorry, uh, Lock, Lock, bleh, Lachlan Monroe, I don't know why that's a tongue twister, is in this film. I was very excited to see that Lachlan was in it. I like his stuff. I like everything he's done that I've seen. Uh, he's been in Riverdale. He did a great job in that. He was in A Night at the Roxbury. I love his character in A Night at the Roxbury. So funny. And he was in Scary Movie, and he's awesome in the first Scary Movie. So fan of him was great to see him. Now, let me give you the quick synopsis of this film since I'm not doing spoilers on it. It's basically about a gay couple where who the one guy had, was married and has a daughter. And he has custody of her, I guess. That's kind of what it seems to me. They don't say anything specifically. Oh, actually, I think they allude to it. So he has custody of his daughter, and his new partner comes in and is basically assuming the role of the step-parent. So it's kind of a situation where they're going away to start a new life, and they get into this new neighborhood, and weird things start to occur to mainly one of the characters and then that's where it starts to really focus on that one character's perspective of things who becomes the main character and the other two characters you're introduced to early on kind of become a little bit more peripheral but they're still quite involved so that's kind of all I want to say about it because I don't want to really want to ruin much but yeah uh, this film has some pretty inspired camera shots to be honest and camera movement so directed quite well. What was this guy's name again? Curtis David Harder. Nice work on the directing. It looks really good. I really enjoy the way this thing looks. Good cinematography, great directing. Um, like I said, some really interesting and cool shots and camera movements, and I just love the way it looks. Especially the very first shot has this really interesting movement to it that just looks really cool. So really enjoyed the visuals of this film, which is nice. Um, the shot that leads right into the title screen is also cool. That's a different one than what I was just talking about. Um, it's, it's kind of like shows a symbol in a way of the title, which I thought was a cool way to kind of lead into that title screen. So good job on that too. Very creative. The family dynamic is pretty well established early on in scenes that actually feel natural, which is extremely important because there are so many times in films, especially lower budget films, where they're trying to get through who the characters are or what the dynamic between the characters are. And they do it in ways that just feel so fake and so forced. The good thing is it's very natural in this. Like you, you learn the family dynamic, you learn who these characters are, you understand their motivations and kind of who they are as people in a way that feels normal. It's like you're just kind of observing part of their life. And for that reason, I think the dialogue is well written. I don't think there was, there would maybe have been like one moment where I was just like, oh, that's really kind of like corny dialogue, but it wasn't terrible. Otherwise, 
I mean, I think the dialogue was well done. It felt very natural, and that's that's a pretty big achievement for for screenwriters because it's not that easy to write dialogue and have it feel like real, like someone's actually saying it, um, and get through what you're trying to get through. So there is some quite good writing to this, especially dialogue wise. And like I was saying, like it fleshes out the characters pretty well, the main the main characters mainly. Uh, each of the initial characters are fleshed out well, so you can feel invested in what could end up happening to them. And that's another important thing about, you know, you getting to know the family dynamic, you getting to know the characters, is that it sets you up to care more. You know, if they set it up where you, you're just kind of more observing and you don't feel like you know these characters at all, you don't feel invested at all, then you feel very detached. And when things start to happen, you don't feel you don't feel anything. You're just kind of like okay things are happening but with the way that they set this up it's nice because like you don't want bad things to happen to these people because they kind of you know they did a, jo a good job of endearing them to you it seems very straightforward for quite a bit in this film but then something odd occurs that creates a very solid air of mystery and that's one of the biggest things is as soon as that thing occurs that kind of starts the mystery of what's actually at play here, what's going on, it does a relatively good job of keeping you wondering what is actually happening. There's some, you know, red herrings that kind of get thrown in, in there. And, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like until pretty much the very end, it does keep you guessing. There were a few things I had in my mind when I was watching it of like, I think maybe it's this, but I also think maybe it's this. And then by the time it got to the end, it ended up being somewhat like one of the things I was thinking, but not exact. So they do an okay job of kind of throwing enough red herrings in there and keeping you engaged enough in the story through the mystery aspects of it. Now, that said, does it really play much like a horror film? Not so much, really. In certain aspects, yes. But they needed, in my opinion, to have a lot more of the actual horror in this. So kind of like the movie Z which is appropriate to refer to, uh, I, I wanted more. They gave you little bits and pieces, but I wanted more. Now, there are a few kind of like scary moments that may be like a jump scare for some people in this film, and they're okay, okay kind, you know, done well enough, I guess, but they also feel very out of place. They really don't feel like they go in the film, and you'll see what I mean when you watch it, if and when you watch it, um, they just feel out of place. They don't feel like they go with the actual movie. And part of the reason is they don't set the the track for those types of things to happen in the film. And it's so infrequent. I think I can only, re only really think of like two like that that even happen until the very end. And there is something at the end that actually works really well that feels like it fits. But the two things prior to that just don't. And you're just like, why the... I don't, I don't understand. So they needed more horror. They needed more of the scary stuff. Um, the horror of it is kind of more of like a personal horror uh, for the main character, um, societal slash neighborhood, paranoia, fear type thing. It's just there's not a lot that happens, which is unfortunate. It's a whole lot of trying to figure out what happens, but there's not – a lot that happens while trying to figure out what happens, if that makes sense. Uh, the music is good in this. There are a few moments where it feels a little bit heavy-handed, but not too bad, and for the most part, music pretty well matched, so I like that. There is a shift of sorts that ends up being used in the film, and it, it's done a few times, and I believe it's there to kind of plant a seed of a certain thing that's kind of happening to kind of potentially happening to cast doubt in the mind of the audience when you feel like you might be on one track of thinking something's happening then they do these kind of and, and you could miss them if you're not paying enough attention like these kind of I was gonna say subtle but not quite subtle almost subtle they don't overstate it like these kind of switches in the film and and you'll see what I mean you'll know what I mean if you watch it so um I feel like that was good because it just ended up being enough for you to just like get that feeling like something else is going on. Like maybe I don't have it figured out when I thought it was this this path. Uh, let's just forget that and instead kind of step back and take take more in and kind of see where this really is going. So that is good. I like that. 
I uh, already talked about the scares. Oh, I do want to call out real quick. Jeffrey Bowyer Chapman, Bowyer Chapman or Bowyer Chapman, I'm sorry, uh, did quite a good job with the acting in this. He is the main character as Malik, and he did quite a good job. I was very impressed with his acting. Uh, for people who may recognize him, he was in um, Grave Encounters 2, and he was also in a few episodes of the newest American Horror Story season. So, just so you know. There's an important scene toward the end that actually doesn't seem to be done very realistically. I was talking about how good the, the writing is for the most part for making things feel real. But there is a kind of pivotal scene towards the end that if you look at if if you're really paying attention to it, the way people are reacting and the way the situation is playing out does not at all feel realistic it doesn't. It, it, it's, it's, it just feels off. It feels weird. And maybe it was intentional to feel that way, but it doesn't play well, in my opinion. There's an interesting point that's made about fear in this film and how it's basically used in society uh, that I think is a very prudent point to be made, and they made the point in a very interesting, cool way. And when it's brought up towards the end of the film, it is kind of this cool moment that, at least me as an audience member, was just like, oh, that's an interesting point, and I think you're right on that. That's a very good, prudent point. It's kind of partially, I'm not going to tell you how they tie it in, but it's basically uh, the idea that fear is can be and is used in society to kind of marginalize some people, to kind of create this us-versus-them mentality and keep people um, living in fear, too, for various reasons. It ends with a pretty good sequence, but overall, I am feeling pretty c conflicted about this, like I was saying, because I just wanted a lot more to it. It does feel like there's some stuff in there where, where they're kind of wasting time. It is about an hour and a half, and it, I, you know, it feels about that. Maybe feels a little bit longer than that, because it does feel like there's a little bit of like time wasting. You can only have someone looking into something for so long before the audience is feeling like, okay, I need to have like a little bit of payoff even before we get to the very end of the film. There is payoff in the end of the film, and I like that about it. In fact, the the very, very end of it, I think, ends in a very interesting way, and they did a solid job with that. Um, so, yeah. This plays with the situation of being viewed as other in a new neighborhood, but it uses that to make the point of what it's like to basically have the perspective of a person who is marked as other within society, not just within the neighborhood. The neighborhood's kind of like a microcosm for what's actually going on point-wise with this. And when I talk about other, I'm talking about mainly in this situation, you know, being gay, um, which, you know, that's a perfect time for me to basically say, you know, I'm a straight ma white male. So my perspective and what I get out of this film may end up being very, very different than what someone who's gay gets out of the film. So if anyone is watching and you are gay and you have any sort of feelings on this film, I'd love for you to comment down there just to see if there's a different perspective to it. Because obviously I'm open to watching this film, but it's not necessarily going to mean the same thing because I haven't been through a lot of what's kind of talked about subtext and overtly uh, within this film. So I, it's it's not something that I'll, you know, really connect with on that level. So, and I'm aware of that. So it's interesting because it pulls together the challenges of living out loud as gay and at the same time having a step-parent situation. Now, I, I can't remember ever seeing any movie or show that kind of tackles the that aspect. You know, I've seen plenty of movies and shows where it's about, you know, living your life out loud and then shows where it's about, you know, dealing with the the issues of trying to be a step parent and those challenges. Now, bringing those two things together, I've never seen that done before and I think it it added a very interesting new aspect to this type of film. So that was very interesting to me that they kind of layered those two things in this. And I like that about the story. That's one of the most engaging things very early on with it. Um so yeah. Uh, and then the last thing I want to say is there's a difference shown between someone who grew up living out loud and someone who came to it later in life. And there's definitely a difference in how they view society and the scars that are ending up being created. 
Now, uh, this kind of leads me to a story that's, you know, it's not my story, but I'm not going to name names or anything. But a friend of mine who is a gay gentleman had told me a story about how he had an uncle who ended up coming out much later in life. And the uncle had then gone to him and kind of apologized to say, you know, I'm very sorry that I wasn't really there for you when you were going through, you know, being out and gay and all the the hatred that was put towards you and all the, you know, all the pressures of society and being judged and feeling, you know, like you don't fit in and all that stuff. You know, I'm sorry I couldn't have been there for you. And I just, you know, he was basically saying that, like, he feels bad that he didn't have to go through that. And then when he came out, it was very accepted, especially within the family, because the my friend had already, you know, done that. He had kind of paved the way. And there's some aspects of that that are really played with in this film that I think work quite well. Um, it really is an interesting look at someone who's always been gay and has always lived out and someone who came to it much later in life. And there is a difference. And a lot of it has to do with the past experience and your feelings towards society and the, the, the scars that have been created by society. So it's, it's interesting from that standpoint. So, uh, as you can tell, there are a lot of things I enjoyed about this film, but there are also some a lot of things that I just I just wanted more. I wanted it to be kind of different. I wanted it to be more horror. So that said, it makes me really feel like I got to come down in the middle. I mean, I'm between two and a half and three stars on this, um, but I think ultimately I just I, I have to go with the two and a half because I truly feel like right in the middle, conflicted on this, whether I fully like it or you know whether I like it or I don't really like it because like I was saying too like the two horror more horror-ish things in it just don't feel like they go you know it, I like what the film has to say I think the subtext is good and I think the themes are good but it's not integrated that well into horror really just saying but that's just me. That's just my personal opinion. And like I always say with my reviews, I would love to hear what other people have to say about this film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you in between like I am? Put some comments down there. Let's talk about that. But regardless, thanks for checking this out. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit that subscribe button if you like any reviews I do, if you appreciate what I'm doing here, because I'm not making money or anything. So if you want to pay me back, just subscribing is a great way to do that. I really, really appreciate it. Every time I see that a new subscriber ha uh, has subscribed, um, I get pretty excited. It feel it. I feel gratitude. It it means a lot to me personally. So, but um, yeah. And if you are going to do that, hit the notification bell. That way, you know anytime I'm putting up new videos or doing live streams or any of that. But regardless, like I said, thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.